Welcome to the Bad Entertainment Show. Tonight's show is brought to you by Howard's Towing and Elkhart. For all your towing needs, Howard's Towing. Tonight's guests are former Miss Elkhart County, Jackie Sharpley. From Skylight Leadership, Jessica Johnson and Rhonda Gibson Willis. And now, here's your host, Risha Ledesma and Michael Wells. Welcome back to another Bad Entertainment Show. I'm Michael Wells. And I'm Risha Ledesma. We're back. We're back. Everybody's at home going, oh, Lord. Oh, here they go. <laughs> you know, probably about five people said, I was sitting somewhere and I saw you like doing the news. And I'm like, I was doing the news. I said, oh, the TV show, the TV show. So We do look like we're at a news desk news anchor. <laughs> this just in. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. This just in. Police raided Justin Bieber's house and they still couldn't find talent. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's something different. <laughs> so what's going on? Should we, the NFL, should we talk about the NFL? No, let's talk about the White House. The White House, yeah. Okay. Locking the doors. Lock the doors. The safest house on the earth. <laughs> Not the earth. The earth. The earth with an F. The earth. With an F. Hop the fence. Hop walk. the fence. I mean, what? Come on, Secret Service, come on now. Right in the front door. Come on, Secret I mean, Service. That he should have been in the NFL football tackle yeah. <laughs> as soon as he hopped that fence. He should have got one foot in front of that <laughs> fence and that would have been it. He should have heard <laughs> Yeah, not good. So, yeah, I mean, so they're, I think they're going to reevaluate what's going on with Secret Service and well, how to protect the White House. Security all the way around needs to be stepped up. Yeah, So exactly. Especially what's, you know, going on. But we're going to talk about other things. NFL. Ray Rice. Ah, what, one hit or quitter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I just... Mean, and, you know, uh, a lot of the, the, the nation was outraged um, that the NFL, they said that the, the owners knew. Well... That they saw the whole tape. Because I know I only saw half of the tape. And it was a while before I saw the whole, the whole thing. But th didn't he get his suspension then when it happened? Yeah, but it was only a two-day. A two-game, sorry. So technically he was already dealt with, correct? Yeah, yeah. So once it got leaked out, then it's a big, a bigger ordeal, you exactly. know, than it, all, than it was. Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, his four-year-old son? Mm-hmm. Willow, Willow Switch? Yeah. And, and you know, the, the son visit, you know, I guess the mom has full custody and the son visit and I guess he was being a naughty young man and he got a spanking, so, and... Now, everybody's up in arms about that, too, so. Now, when my grandparents used to make me go get my own Willow Switch. Exactly, me too. <laughs> three of them and braid them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and you better not cry. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how I was raised, so. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's what's missing. And our views don't affect, you know, our views are not necessarily the views of the, the station here. But... There should be more discipline in the right. house. So, you know, we took all the discipline away from the teachers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's just my Michael Wells little view on, on the subject. And I think kids would be more, they have more structure if they have more discipline. More respect. Exactly. I mean, I remember getting paddled in class and I'm okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah, okay. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> What's it called, PSD? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I think there does need to be discipline still in the home. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, yeah. So, I right, mean, wrong, indifferent, I guess it all depends on who you talk to. Right. I mean, I'm okay with it. Yeah, me too. Okay, it's that time. It's that time. It's time for Young and Restless. Yes. Where do we start? Where oh do we gosh. start? Oh, did you see Malcolm come back for like three days? Three days? Yeah. It was one day. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it was, you know, yeah, it was one day in, in Young and the Restless Land. Way but he was going, yeah. to wave that lollipop and then snatch it away. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the, you know what? They failed me on that mm -hmm. one. 
<laughs> they felt me. That's my eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I don't know, Neil, with the old zappity zap, I'm as bright as you are. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about him wanting to divorce Hillary because he's blind? I've been watching this soap opera since I was 17 years old. And the whole Neil, Devon, Hillary thing, it's just driving me nuts. I know. Because I wanted Hillary and Devon to be together. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it does. I mean, they're young, yep. they're hip, he's loaded, you know. Exactly. <laughs> he can drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, I, th I just think they're a, a great fit, and they really should make that happen. Yeah. What I think is going to happen is they're going to get caught just as Neil gets his eyesight back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's going to catch them. Well, you see Jack already got the eagle eye on him. Uh -huh. Jack's like, Yeah, he already he feels it. Exactly. And I think Malcolm felt it, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only one that can't see it is Neil. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, no. but it's kind of ironic. Exactly. I hope he gets his eyesight back. Well, just like Jack. Um, some while back, Jack couldn't walk. Now he can walk, so. He's, I mean, he knows. He's been through it. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of walking, people out there in, in TV land, if you're in a coma for, for a, a year, year you cannot get up and walk around. You have to learn how to rewalk again like an infant. You can't do that. Why is Phyllis walking around? You know, that, that's just bad writing right there. I mean, she's, where's she at? In Georgia? And she's, she's walking to General City, which is Wisconsin? Yeah, and um, today she was um, 285 miles out. Uh-oh. She, she was standing right by a sign that said um, uh, Madison and... General City. General City, yeah, she was 285 miles out. So. so if she's only yelled like one or two words, how does this person know where to take her? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. Okay. The writers are letting me down on this one. Mariah. Cassie? Yeah, whoever. Mariah Cassie? Same, yeah. I, I think um, somehow it's going to come out about Summer and Nick being... Did you see that um, Mariah has the wrong information on that? She Mariah does. thinks it's Faith. Well, you know, Victor, he swooped in with the old champagne glass and the mm -hmm. hairbrush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll put his team on it and they'll figure it out. But he's already paid her. Yeah. So I don't know. And Mariah, you know, you know, she'll come around. It'll be around Christmas time. It'll be a, Christ a Christmas miracle. And oh, they'll be all or a sitting in front of the... Or Yeah. <laughs> Whichever one Let's comes get first. ready to rumble. That's what it'll be. So. Um, Nikki's drinking again. Oh, this is a great time. Nikki's getting on my nerves. Well, can now we, she can barely even say Paul's name. Yeah, can we can can we write Nikki out the? Can we write her out? Well, I mean, the whole Ian thing has gotten out of hand. I mean, it's just, it's just bad. No. Props to the guy that plays Ian. I really like him. I, I don't like him, so that means he's good. He's, I mean, a, he's a real good actor, so props to him for... He, I mean, he's really playing that role as a creep. And, I mean, he's do, I, I like the role that he's playing, so... Is he dead? Um, no. He's going to come back. Yeah. He's going to come back, and I think... I don't know. I'm trying to figure out who actually did it because I don't think it was Dylan. No. I don't no. think it was Dylan. I don't think it was Dylan either. So we'll, we'll find out. You know how it is in, in soap opera land. And well, uh, well, we would talk about Michael and Lauren, but we can't talk about it on regular TV. Yeah, we can't do that. But so we they're having can issues. talk about Horns of Plenty show. Yes, we can. Yay. And what is, what is Horns of Plenty? That is a benefit concert um, that is the Tolson Center and the Elkhart Education Foundation. We're teaming up to um, help with the kids with arts, education, athletics. So we have the same goal, so it made sense to partner up. Yeah, exactly. And who's coming? Tim Cunningham and Ty Kazi. Ooh. Yay, yay, <laughs> yay. You know, I'm a fan. Yes, so. yes, a big fan. And, and a lot of people are big fans of Tim Cunningham around here. Phenomenal saxophone player. I mean, um, 
great regional artist. He's 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 a he's a pretty good guy. Well, and I think because he's played at the jazz festival, I mean that's going to bring a lot a lot of people to the concert. Yeah. So you guys are not doing anything um, Saturday night, November first, seven, 7 p.m. The Learner Theater, downtown Elkhart, the Horns of Plenty show. Uh, Tim Cunningham and Ty Kazi, get your tickets. Tickets on sale soon. Uh, what next week? Next week. Yeah. Keep Can't your eyes wait. on um, Learner. Dot or are they dot org or dot com? I believe they're org. Dot org. The Learner Theater dot org. So. So the dance team has been doing a little uh, traveling, huh? Yeah, we've been um, Cedar Point and Michigan and. We're going to be in uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan here in November for another food drive to okay. help the community in Benton Harbor. So right now, um, we'll be right back. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with our first guest. So our first guest tonight is a former Miss Elkhart County, and she's here to talk about Elkhart County and some of the pageants and stuff she's been in. You guys give a warm bad entertainment welcome to Jackie Sharpie. Sharpley. Sharpley. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, the great music. <laughs> How's it going Jackie? Good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no welcome problem. to the show. Thank you. So you've got some titles behind your name. You I do. Um, I was fortunate enough. I grew up in Goshen and then in 2010 uh, was crowned Miss Elkhart County. In 2011 I went on to compete at Miss Indiana and uh, won the title of Miss Indiana 2011 and then six months later I uh, was on the Miss America stage competing and representing the state of Indiana. So it was a whirlwind and was just an incredible honor and uh, something that I'm, I, I have loved being a part of. And you know that's every little black girl's dream is to be in the Miss America pageant. It was, it was <laughs> amazing and um, a lot of people do ask was this something that you aspired to do when you were younger? Is this something that you got involved in pageantry when you were younger? And for me it wasn't. Um, I danced, I was on stage, I played lots of sports but it was never something that really caught my eye until I was in college and a family friend said you know you should try Miss Elkhart County which then feeds into the Miss America organization. Um, and I kind of just signed up and registered. I knew that uh, winning or doing well would provide scholarship dollars. Mm -hmm. um, from that moment on, just really fell in love with the Miss America organization and was able to graduate college debt-free because of being involved in the Miss America organization. So that's why I fell in love with it and why I did it. But it was never so, I always watched it on TV, <laughs> but I never thought that it would be anything that I would ever do. Um, but it was an incredible experience. Yeah, we used to put on heels and put a, a long white towel on her head. Oh, I love when it. We were little, act <laughs> like we were in the pageant. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's just a, a girl's dreams too. It is, and I, I loved, that was one of my favorite things uh, when I was Miss Indiana would be working with little kids because they kind of miss your eyeline and they look straight up at your crown because they're so in awe. And then for me to be able to be silly, represent who I am and show them that, you know, even a girl from Goshen, Indiana, there's only been two girls from Goshen, Indiana to ever win Miss Indiana. So I always felt that it was my prerogative to be able to, to share that message that I, I did it. I never thought that I would ever be able to do that. You can do it. And it's just been awesome to promote that even after being Miss Indiana. So what question did they ask you when you were in the Miss America pageant? Well, something that people actually don't see on TV is that we have a 10-minute private interview with the judges, and um, they're able to ask you anything from current events, anything from your bio, uh, your future endeavors. So you kind of need to be ready for anything, and it was uh, a whirlwind 10 minutes. They have celebrities that are judges, so my most notable celebrity judge was uh, Kris Jenner um, from Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh. Oh, and wow. So she had some interesting questions, but was really intrigued about, about me and wanted to know, know what I was doing. And Lara Spencer, who's a host on Good Morning America, mm -hmm. she was also one of my judges. She was a spitfire. Um, so it, that, uh, getting through that was enough. And then my question on stage was actually about my personal platform. Okay. So each uh, Miss America contestant, local level, so Miss Elkhart County contestants, they'll have one too. Uh, they pick a personal platform, a cause that they're um, inspired by. And since I've been dancing and on stage since I was little, mine was about supporting the arts. And so I was able to share how important that was to me, how important it was for me to be involved at 
in that in schools and how vital it is for school corporations to continue funding our programs even though they're the first to be cut. Um, so that was my question on stage, which I love talking about that. It's something that shaped me. Um, I love that there's dancers going to be on the show later because I love being able to travel the state and promote being involved in the arts. It was so important. And you have a little bit of the acting bug. I do. I started acting when I was younger and that was also something that I never really imagined that um, would be my my college major and I ended up going to Bowling Green State University and major double majored in musical theater and children's theater um, so that was incredible um, there I had some really amazing roles but it, I truly believe it led me to being prepared for being Miss Indiana I performed in front of oh hundreds of thousands of people during that year and it really taught me how to be comfortable in that and kind of adapting to any environment so um, it was an amazing few oh, years geez. at Bowling Green State <laughs> University getting my musical theater degree. So tell us about life after and what are you doing now? Life after, um, well I think a big accomplishment that if my husband is watching he'll say getting married last year. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's exciting. <laughs> So it was almost a, a year to the date of me being finished with Miss Indiana that um, I went on and got married. Um, our fun story, he actually played uh, football at Notre Dame and um, on our third date was technically the night of Miss America because he flew out and surprised me and I had no idea, oh. which was a huge gamble because I know it's so great Chills. now, but I hate surprises. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I kind of looked at him when he was there. I mean, like I had just done the biggest thing in my entire life and I kind of did a double take and I go, what are you doing here? Which was not very kind. <laughs> but, I agree, say, but I did marry him, so it worked backfire. out. <laughs> well, I, in my head, I go, if this doesn't go well, he's going to be in all of my pictures. <laughs> but it went really well, and now it's a great story. <laughs> um, so that was just an incredible whirlwind. So we got married. Um, I actually worked at a church for two and a half years up in Michigan as the director of student ministries, working with high school kids, and then just still love working with kids. So now I'm the associate director of special events at the Boys and Girls Club of Goshen, um, working with donors and raising funds to be able to operate as the Boys and Girls Club, and I love it there. Well, that is great. great. So what events do you have coming up for the Boys and Girls Club? Well, we actually finished a really unique event. We had a clay shoot fundraiser this past Sunday, and that kind of concluded the five, we have five major events each year. So that was our last one for the year, and kind of wrapping things up and doing some events in-house at the club. So it was a... Oh, a lot to tackle. <laughs> I'm still recovering from Sunday. Those are long days. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. say, did you? Did you? Cry? I didn't. I just <laughs> got to organize it. But everybody was there and had an absolute blast. And it, it allowed us to reach out to uh, to a different group of people. A lot of nonprofits have golf outings, which we have one that we love. Oh, we have one. We love it, and it was very successful this year. You just don't um, but know we tried what something done. new. <laughs> <laughs> you said the, the golf. Are you not uh, a golfer? Or uh, are you a golfer? Every I day, did. if I could. Every day, if I could. Well, good. You'll have to golf in our outing next year. Uh, you, it was, uh, we had 36 teams. It wow. was very successful. We so shut these we'll cameras down. I get you my business card uh, so you can call yes. me. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to visit the. Did you visit the dance team? Was it you that visited? That wasn't me, but was that actually is our current mm -hmm. Miss Elkhart County, Gracie Lyons, and okay. she will be giving up that title here shortly. Uh, November 8th, uh, we'll be having Miss Elkhart County 2015 at Goshen Middle School. So um, I'll be there. How and does she'll that be there. feel when you have to pass that down? Kind Bitter of bittersweet. Sweet, yeah. My year as Miss Indiana, I it was my goal at the end of the year to be the busiest Miss Indiana. For people to look back and say that she took every day and used it to the fullest. Whether it was visiting a hospital, a school, doing doing whatever I wanted to say yes. So after a year, I was exhausted. I was so ready to kind of move into my next stage because I really soaked in every single moment. And I was really ready for another girl to get to do that. I mean, not many girls can say that they went to Miss America. It's kind of abnormal right. when I kind of tell people that and, and introduce myself. So I wanted somebody else to have that fun and have that incredible ride. Man, that's great. I know, so um, what's the farthest place you went traveling with 
the pageantry? Oh, gosh. Well, the, in Indiana, being Miss Indiana, I did have my last appearance all the way down in Evansville. That oh. was a really long drive. But yeah. I'm so glad I got to see the entire state, both time zones, so many different people. Um, it just was so neat because Indiana is, is just so diverse in so many different communities. To, to be able to reach out to them. And that was such an amazing experience for me um, to be able to share my passion about the arts, to really educate people about myself and have them fall in love with the Miss America organizations. There's a lot of people that have different ideas about it. And I wanted to just have them meet me, have them meet Jackie and realize that mi being Miss Indiana is really obtainable. Great. Well, your crown is beautiful. Thank you. I can never wear it again, which a lot of people ask. Once really? you pass it on, yeah. then Miss Indiana gets to wear it. Wow. So she gets to wear it uh, <laughs> the, for the rest of the year. And it was fun to be able to wear it. And now, um, whenever I meet kids, they get to wear it. Okay, wow. Great. So once again, it's November 8th? November 8th at Goshen Middle School at 6 o'clock. Um, Public we're welcome? Yes. And we're still taking contestants. So if you're looking at oh. me and saying, hey, I never thought that I could do that, um, Miss contestants are ages 17 and 24. We also have a teen competition, um, ages 13 to 17. And we have a princess program that's not a competition. It's just really fun. They get to hang out with the girls. And I just always like to to remind people, I, I paid for college this way. That's why I got into it. So if you need those funds for, scho for, for scholarships, we all do, why not give it a try? Right, exactly. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Jackie. Thank you. For being here. We'll be um, right back with our special yeah. guest from Skylight Leadership. Yay. Thank you. And welcome back to the Bad Entertainment Show. Now we have our special guests here from Skylight Leadership, Jessica Johnson and Rhonda Gibson Willis. <laughs> Hardest working <laughs> leaders in the Midwest here. Hey, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you. You're actually not new to this show, but mm -hmm. you're new in the seat. Yeah, I kind of like being behind the scenes and managing what's going on back there. This is a little different, so. You're up front today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You're going to learn today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Skylight Leadership. Um, tell us about it. We are a leadership development firm, and we go to organizations, businesses, find out what the need is, and then customize trainings. We also do individual coaching to help with professional or even personal life, whichever the need is. Okay. Now, how did you two partner up? <laughs> That's a long, long story. Because <laughs> <laughs> we go back. We do. Way little, Way little back. kids, but... Yeah, we go back not so way little kids. But it's, <laughs> it feels like a long, long time. Some days it feels a lot longer than others. But <laughs> we actually met in graduate school. We were in a class together and um, ended up working at the same organization. And after working there for a few years, we parted ways professionally, but we maintained our friendship and actually started another business together with another couple of friends um, doing counseling because we were licensed clinical social workers. and. I went back to the organization that we worked at before, and so that's how we started this. So is it hard to get your foot in the door when you approach a business and say, hey, you know, we offer this, mm -hmm. do you need it? It's very hard. One, both Rhonda and I are therapists. We are not salespeople. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very difficult to actually sell and convince people that they actually need that, those soft skills. and that other people can come in and actually teach that. Sometimes people think people are born natural leaders and that it's not teachable, mm -hmm. but it is, it's teachable. Anybody can be a leader. Everyone has that potential to be a leader. So for us to get into the door and convince them of that, it's, it, it's hard. And so one of the things that we did develop was a free training to, to kind of show people this is what we do. Okay. You would think it'd be easy to give away something free. Because everybody wants everything free. Mm. No. no. People think there are strings attached to the oh. free thing. And so, you know, one of our models is we can invest in billboards in terms of our marketing, or we can invest in people. And so there are often times that we, we leave with this free training and the feedback is so spectacular that people are saying, you know, that really motivated me, that, that inspired me to, 
build more into my own leadership, which is really why we got into what we're doing. You know, we, as she said, we're, we're therapists, we're social workers at heart. And so the reason we do what we do is so that we can make a positive impact on people's lives and ultimately the world because world domination is our goal. <laughs> <laughs> now, do the companies report back to you after a certain time and say, you know what, we've had this much success since your training? Well, we like to, to touch base with them and maintain a relationship so that we're continuously talking with them about the needs that we see that perhaps come up during the course of our trainings. Um, we've had some partners, organizations that we partnered with where we're able to along the way say, hey, although this was the, the course we mapped out initially, these are the needs that you identified, these are some of the other things that we see that could possibly be more beneficial for you and your company. And so we try to maintain as close of a relationship as possible so that we're getting that feedback from them of how it's going. And we have gotten positive feedback that changes have been made after we, we've left an organization because our goal is not to come there and stay there forever. Our goal is to help to empower people so that they can work with their, with their staff and not have to depend upon us to do leadership development. Now, is it always going to be you two, or are you going to expand? We plan on expanding. We already, we, we meet, we've met with people and talked about actually growing our team. We have people that specialize in the sales department. We have people that enjoy the training part, but not ready to leave their jobs to do such things. So Rhonda calls it that we're people collecting. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds bad. It sounds really <laughs> creepy <laughs> to me. But you know, we, we are can put people into collecting. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I mean, you have to be picky. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. when you're when it's your name out there yes. and something that you created. Definitely. And we're not only picky with the people that we bring in. We're picky with the people we work with. Right. As well, we're not looking to get in the door with any company that says, come on, just train our people. We want to work with people that actually get it, that they actually want to invest in their, their employees and help in that development. So you have to start at the top and work your way down. Definitely. Has, Definitely. Have you ran into any difficult higher-ups that didn't get it, but someone else did and said, hey, we need you? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, it helps when the decision makers, the people who actually can make the decision to bring us in are the ones that get it. And what we discovered is it's almost a disservice when we go into our organization and we get their people all ready and their people are like, yeah, this is what we really want. This is what we need. This is what we want to grow. And then the higher ups don't pull the trigger. And so we've been looking at, OK, how does that really impact what's going on with uh, with the with the employees of the organization because now we've gotten them all excited about it right, but there's really no follow up on the upper end so we've, we've looked at that and that is a that is a difficult thing in which is why we went the route of saying we're not to work with everybody not everybody's ready for us right now you know my husband sells oxygen and the beautiful thing about oxygen is everybody needs it yeah right. exactly and everybody knows that they need it leadership development Everybody needs it, but not everybody knows that they need it. And That's so going, <laughs> going in and doing the, if we have to do the convincing and the selling and we're really pushing it, then that's saying to us that that organization isn't ready. We had the opportunity to meet with the organization today that was really, really on, in line with leadership development. And they said to us, you know, we want to partner with you. We want to see our staff grow. We want to see them develop. And that is our ideal organization to work with. Well, great. Well, how can people contact you if they want to get a training? Well, well they can email us at info at skylightleadership.com or they can contact us via our Facebook page, Skylight Leadership, or they can call us at 574-400-5151. Now, I, I follow your post mm -hmm. and you're everywhere. <laughs> You're everywhere in a matter of like days. So what's the farthest that you've gone? The farthest? I guess we've gone to Indianapolis. We've, we've done trainings in the Indianapolis and Muncie area. And then we've done a few up in the Niles and um, Michigan, lower mm -hmm. Michigan area. But 
And you, you always pick restaurants that I love. And I'm like, they ain't good. <laughs> yeah. I want to go. I want to <laughs> Well, go. you know, if you're going to speak well, you have to <laughs> nourish yourself. <laughs> nourish this is hard work. work. <laughs> they got us working day and night. Yeah. They can right. at least feed us well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By they, I mean us because we're it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck to you. Thank you. And your lead, was it Skylight Leadership? Skylight mm -hmm. Leadership. What, what I like is um, the Facebook post every day, the, um, the inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, the uplifting post that you guys put up every day on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So you got out there, Michiana, if you haven't liked Skylight Le Leadership, look it up on Facebook, like that page, and you get up every morning if you've had a down, you know, the Skylight Leadership post. We'll bring you back up. Nice. And feel free to share it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I do. I share them all the time. <laughs> well, that is great, and that's wonderful. Okay. Okay. So I want to thank our special guests from Skylight Leadership and from um, Elkhart County. Miss. Miss Elkhart County. And um, we know who's coming next. The Bad Entertainment Dance Team coming up next. That's the end of the show. Come on, dancers. Where my dancers at? Uh-huh. Once again, another Bad Entertainment show. Thanks to all our guest stars, Jackie, Rhonda, Jessica, Skylight Leadership, Miss Elkhart County, my dance team, my co-host, Rishi Ledesma. Don't forget the Horns of Plenty show. Keep your eyes on learner.org for more information. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>